Welcome, Julia Fox, to Thank High you. Low with Emrata. I'm so excited you're here. I'm really excited to be here. It's like, I feel like the t- TikTok has been demanding the collab. I know, I know. I get to see the comments all the time and I'm like, it's coming. I love it so much. And yeah. I'm like, thank you for letting it be of on course. my podcast. Um, okay, so people don't know this, but we've known each other for a while. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I remember Josh and Benny Safdie talking about you to me. And then I followed you on Instagram and I have this like memory of you wearing a condom yeah. costume for Halloween, like yeah. being a condom and looking like fire and me DMing you and you being like, you already know, girl. And I was like, I can't wait to be this girl's friend. Oh my God. That's so funny. But like you haven't changed at all, which a lot of people I think don't even. I know. I know. Like I couldn't change even if I tried, like I'm just this way. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it's been really cool to also see your evolution. Like I feel like you've had eras and I'm like, very much into your era right now and relate yeah. to it yeah. so much. I know. Um, I can't believe we went and had kids. We had boys a with month some apart. New York goons. Mm. Mm. <laughs> some New York mm. City goons. Um, but literally, okay. they're a month apart. I know. Which is Our crazy. boys, they've got to chill. I, I really know. want. That's the next class. I know. They Valentino need to be like Sly. best friends. Yes. Also, isn't your son's last name Bear? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Fox oh. and Bear. Oh, wait. But Valentino's it's fine. last it's name okay. is. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> In my mind, he's Valentino wow. Fox. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, it should be that way. I don't know why I was, yeah, mommy brain. <laughs> Dude, mommy brain is so real. Yeah, it's real. Um, okay. I literally will put a thought down in my head and it's gone when I go back for it. Like, I'm like, wait, what was I just thinking about for an hour? Like, it's, it's gotten better crazy. for me. But the first year afterward, I was so like, I thought I was just going to be stupid forever. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like the first I was finishing the book when I'd had Sly and I was like three months postpartum and I was like trying to find words and there would just nothing would come up. And I was like, I actually don't know who I am anymore. I like don't have vocabulary. I don't know how to communicate. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can totally relate to that. Yeah. And actually I was, now that I'm in my process of writing the book now, Mm -hmm. I was thinking like, how do women do this when they have children? Like this is impossible. And then I thought of you and I was like, well, she fucking did it. I was so tired. I almost did. I almost didn't do it. Um, (laughs) But also you don't have a nanny. So like, right. I I want to talk. Okay. Let's talk about being single moms, raising boys in New York city. You're from New York city. And like, I need, I need advice, honestly. Like, how are we going to raise these boys not to be entitled city brats? Okay, so what Mm -hmm. I really want to do is now, I just feel like there's really like a shortage of teachers and the public school system is just not very good here. Mm -hmm. And I know because I went to public school. And then on on the flip side of that, like with the private schools, I have found personally that my friends that have went to private school in New Mm -hmm. York City they are a little warped. Yeah, Their sense of reality is a little of. warped. Yeah. I love them to death, mm-hmm. but it's, it, I think it is a toxic environment. Yeah. And like no I, grounding. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I don't want my son to like, we live totally normal. I still live in my same little two bedroom that I've had, you know, yeah. pre pandemic. So I'm like, you know, he, he doesn't know anything, you know, yeah. like I'm l- lugging my stroller up a flight of stairs. Like, uh, you know, sh- we're, is real. it's not glamorous at all. Yeah. So, you know, I, I really just want to keep him as grounded as possible. But don't you feel like New York city kids, like, even if they're not raised rich, there is, especially dudes have a little bit of a, like, even more entitlement than your average guy. Oh, absolutely. So how the hell do we avoid that? That's what I'm trying to say. (sighs) It's hard, but I just think it would be so cool to like create a little pod of kids and then like just outsource higher educators to come in and it could literally be like a mechanic. We just hire a mechanic. So I want my son to know how to change a tire, how to do his taxes, how the IRS works. I want him to know all these things. I did not know how to do my taxes. And I just, same. And, you know, I... I just really want more. And I feel like there's there's a lot of room for development in the educational sphere. Yeah. And, you know, I would love for Valentino to learn farming and how to plant and grow things and, you know, how to 
take the leaf off one you're like plant prepping and, for the apocalypse yeah, you're it, like when the world ends you know, valentino's gonna know what the fuck is up yeah i mean it's here because he needs to learn actually useful life skills and yeah. you know the world is going in a scary place right mm -hmm. now and i think it's just about what we have in here yeah you know no i think about that sometimes like if the big one hit or whatever like i'd die i think yeah. i'd die <laughs> what do you mean the big one hit? Like, like the apocalypse oh, happens like the real and i'm just like gotta like fucking survive yeah, i need yeah, to yeah. like get some more skills honestly i'll go to the same school as I, valentino you know so i think I, i'd honestly do okay i feel like you would too i i i do because like I'm just that bitch. You're like, I'll just activate. Yeah, yeah, I'll activate. If I'm in like survival mode, like there is nothing I won't do, you know, to like make sure that we're all collectively good. Honestly, it's one of the things I respect about you the most is like you're hustling and you're just like unapologetic hustling. Like I feel like you've been that way since you were a kid, yeah. just from what I know about your life and even just being particularly hustling men. Yeah. And I, I think it's like a really tight, feminist approach yeah. um you started as a dominatrix right in high mm -hmm. school and yeah, so do but you even feel like prior is that, to that yeah. I was still doing things um so did you just like get a sense of the way the world worked really young and we're like I'm gonna use this to my advantage being a dominatrix set me up for the world in ways that college never did yeah. um and I did actually end up going to community college for two years and then I transferred out to the new school and then I dropped out. But I it was kind of too. like all, and the only reason I did that was because growing up, I always was so like stigmatized as like the problem child. Like you're never going to go to college. You're never going to, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. literally had teachers actually say that, like, well, you're not going to so college, so who up. cares, right? Um, so, Jesus. so it was kind of like, um, I'm going to go mm -hmm. to prove to everyone that like, I, I can, I can do it if and I want to. And that they were wrong. Yeah. And that they were wrong <laughs> yeah, about me. Yeah. So I, I, I went to community college and I did the whole thing and I, and I, and then I went to the new school for like a semester and I was like, oh wait, this is such a scam. Like I did this. I went to yeah. arts. I went majored in art at UCLA and like did a year there and was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to be in so much like debt. I know. This is insane. I'd like just started working, like making enough money to pay my college tuition bills. And I was like, what am I even doing this for? Mm -hmm. And then I dropped out. Yeah. And also that being that I was already in New York, a lot of my friends that went to college, um, when they came back after mm -hmm. those four years, they were so unwell mm. coming back into the city where like, I'm 22 and I already have right. a company and I already have connections yeah. and I'm, you know, doing outsourcing and just doing all these things. And like, they really were just so crippled from having been away for four years and, and in this very sheltered environment that isn't realistic in the real world, you know? No, it's not. It isn't the real world at yeah. all. And a lot of kids like leave high school and haven't experienced anything. So like they're drinking, they're doing drugs for the first time. Everyone's like fucking each other. And, and it's they, yeah, they don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to handle I it. I, that's one of the reasons, I mean, my high school, I didn't grow up in New York, but like I got there and I was like, I've done all of these things. Like I'm not interested in this. And yeah. like, I mean, yeah, it was a very specific experience mm -hmm. but god bless the god bless college yeah we're all about education god bless college and and, and listen if you want to go and get an education and whatever like that's great but you don't have to mm -hmm. you know i agree so. i agree well now um i don't know about you i feel like i do know this actually but um i'm getting a lot of my education from tiktok yeah I yeah, love it I know, so much. I, I know. I love seeing your TikToks. I like Thank they bring you. me so much joy. And honestly, this is something I want to talk about. Was we there was that one TikTok that said that we were tethered? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I love like that. Yeah, and it's so crazy because I texted you two weeks. I first of all believe that one hundred percent. Oh yeah, I think we're definitely tethered. Totally. I like it's really bizarre. I texted yeah. you two weeks ago it's or like something. It's like we're on parallel paths, but you know, they're different, yes. but they're like, it's still it's kind honestly of the same makes way. me believe in like magic yeah. and mm -hmm. I don't know, like reincarnation and I don't yeah. know something, but I had this dream where we were in this giant house and you were living there with Valentino. It was like basically a building. And I was like, I was with you. And like, I think Richie and Valentino were like in another room and we were writing a song. 
Oh my God. And like, we, I was like working on it in my dream. I was like thinking about sounds, whatever. And then I texted you and you were like, that's so fucking weird. That's witch shit. I've been thinking about making music. Yeah. Oh my God. I almost didn't tell you too. I was like, this is so weird when you tell people about your dreams, you know? No, but they mean something. They mean something. Yeah. No, I definitely believe in, in magic, I guess, if we can call it that. Are you going to drop an album? Because like, I want to work on it. So yeah. Are you? It's definitely going to happen. Yeah. I think uh, when I'm done writing the book, then I'll Mm -hmm. be able to like, uh, like exhale and like do other fun, Mm -hmm. creative things that I really want to do that I've kind of put on hold, especially stuff in like the clothing realm and the like whatever it may Mm -hmm. be. Because you had a fashion line before. Exactly. I've done it. But this time I would now that I learned and I learned from my mistakes last time, Mm -hmm. like now I would just do a totally different approach. Like I would just do what I want to do, you know, and I wouldn't be like listening to you know, what every, everyone's telling me we need to do. Can you, know? you tell us a little bit about the book? I, I read something about how you're like, I don't want to jinx it. And I'm the same way. Yeah. I like never wanted to talk about it, but I'm just curious. Yeah. No, I talk about it all the time. Okay. So okay. it's fine. First of all, I've wanted to write a book my entire life. Like my whole life, people would be like, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. Sick. And I was like, oh, and I just, and I loved it. And I loved books when I was little. I would like steal books from Barnes and Nobles and uh, steal the little nightlight too. Mm-hmm. So I could just go under the covers and like read books all night. Like I, that's I just a good, loved it. That's a great it. way to be educated, yeah. honestly. That was what I was interested in, like yeah. adult literature. Like I read Angela's Ashes when I was like nine years old. Oh my like, God, I'm not that's, kidding. That's sick. And I was like, oh, best book I've ever read in my life. Yeah. You know, like- <laughs> So I really always wanted to do it. And, and I thought that it would be easier, but I found that my memory is so unreliable Mm. that I really, it feels more like an investigative journalism moment. (laughs) Cause 'Cause it's memoir. You're writing about your experiences. Exactly. But you know, I really want to stay true to the facts, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm also writing about other people that were in my life. Obviously, I've changed their name and the descriptions and and whatever. They do that at the end, too. They have, like, legal come in. Okay, come and come through it. So you shouldn't worry about it too much. Okay, good. Yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, I just really want to make sure that everything is, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, books are subjective. Like, it's your memory. It's your POV. It's your experience. I feel like you should just write that shit. I know, but I would hate, like, someone coming out and being, like, that. It's not what happened. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, I know. but it's I don't so... think that would happen. But, you know, you're my, it's like an irrational fear. Like, yeah. we all have irrational fears that make no sense. But, you know, no, I get it. Also, just the, it's really hard. I feel like there's pressure, obviously, around you writing a book. I had that too. But in some ways, yeah. it was almost like ever, the bar was so low. Nobody expected that much that in a lot of ways, it was like, it was like you going back to college where I was just like, right. I'm going to fucking do this and blow everyone's mind, which is also why I didn't want to talk about it. Right. Um, but I feel like people are so excited for your book that that puts I like, know. it's really hard for me to write now because I'm like, I know that it could be published. Ugh. And when I was writing the book, I like tricked myself into thinking that it wasn't, wasn't going to be published. Right. And that's how I was able to write it. Cause I just was like, it doesn't matter. It'll, maybe it'll only be for my eyes. You're so right. You're so right. Just knowing that people are going to read it is kind of, is debilitating because you like judge yourself as you're putting it down you're yeah you're 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 reading you're like writing it through their eyes yeah. you know so yeah. it's so just even just if it's embarrassing girl. even if it's like doesn't yes. paint me in a good light yes. like I did some fucked up things mm-hmm. like also you, you know, can always I was 14 like yeah so but <laughs> you know you can also go back and edit just like yeah. get it down and yeah then, exactly. I'm just overwriting yeah. right now like yeah. my my chapter one is 40 two pages I think yeah so you know it's it's I'm I'm going she's going Uh, you're fucking doing it and my friends are so supportive and like just help me so much oh that's great yeah like with you have such a good crew of friends I feel like you have like a family well that's my family yeah Yeah, 1000 percent without a doubt like that's my family it's so special and I feel like they're all like like there's a village raising Valentino which is how I feel he has a lot of aunties and a lot of love and He's a, he's yeah, and he loves it. He he loves to dress up too. Mm-hmm. He like puts on my shoes and walks. It's hilarious. Oh my god, Sly does yeah. that. I know. It's well, because so my morning routine, I like bring Sly into. I make him breakfast, whatever, and then I get in the shower, and Sly comes with me. And then when I get dressed and like do my makeup, he's just chilling, playing around me. Yeah. So now he like does it. He'll yeah, put yeah, on yeah. my clothes. He'll play with the makeup. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Valentino will pick up brushes and start painting. Yeah. Is putting them on his face. I mean, I've so looked cute. over and he's had like 
full brown oh my like, God. everywhere. And I'm like, whoopsies, yeah. at least that's natural makeup. <laughs> like, uh oh. It's hard to be single and have a fucking kid. I know. Yeah. But I love it's it really too. Hard. I don't know why. I do too. I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm-hmm. Like, he's definitely like my little buddy. And so he's with his dad two nights out of the week. Mm-hmm. And then we alternate weekends. Okay. That's nice. So you get free weekend. So, so yeah, yeah. No, it, it actually like, it, it works. Like, obviously, you know, I'm with him the majority of the time and it's impossible to get anything else done. Like, yeah. I literally can't even answer the phone because he'll start screaming and, you know, he just tries to my, grab it. Yeah. If I'm texting, he grabs the phone out of my mm-hmm. hand. And so it's like, uh, you know, I saw your TikTok where you were like rich people, like not raising their kids. Yeah. And I feel like you're very committed, like to raising yeah. your kid yourself. I, I have am. a nanny. I, ha- yeah. I mean, like, I don't know what else he would do. Like, where's, or Valentina's with his dad right With now. his dad. Yeah. yeah. He's with them for. So you schedule things like around your time. Around when he's wow. with his dad. Yeah. So it's I like amazing never have a day it. off. Like yeah. if, I, it, I, if I have a day off, like it'll be like, I have three hours right. in the morning and like, I can just be on TikTok, make Ugh. a video, yeah. like whatever, I feel like answer you also emails and texts from like two weeks ago, right. like just uh, horrible. Um, but, and so you're writing a book while you're also raising a boy. Like, yeah, that's okay. Like you. you're busy <laughs> and like having a full career and like going to events yeah. and acting and like, well, right? the, like most of the time when I go to events, like it'll literally just be to do the step and repeat. Yeah. And, and then, then maybe I'll make around and say hello, to, like a few people. And then I just sneak out because I'm exhausted. Well, you also understand you're like, I don't actually need to go socialize. I'm yeah. here for the photos. Yeah, exactly. Like I came. That's what you wanted anyway. You know, you um, got your photo. You're so smart about how you've like leveraged paparazzi and like opportunities. Like, do you have a master plan or is it just something? Where- I don't like the, the paparazzi guy that I use. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like my friend now. We're, That's cool. Yeah. So I pretty much like only shoot with him, but okay. he's in LA. Okay. And then obviously I'll get papped sometimes just random yeah, and I yeah. always look like shit and no, it's fine, I feel whatever. Like you always look good. Thank I like you. it. It's like mommy mode, Julia, yeah. and then like Julia fucking serving. Thank you. I like when you said um, the paparazzi guy that I use. Because you're like, I yeah. use him. Yeah. Then. Well, I mean, that's he, not always he uses me too. He yeah, uses of course. me too. But it's mutual. But no, use isn't the right word. But it's like, it's, he's not hired. Like, I'm not paying right. him. So it's like, I don't know. No, you have the, a transaction that I work that, like, with, those, I guess. The yeah, one yeah, that yeah, I work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he is a brilliant photographer. The pictures are really the angles, good. He, we don't even edit any of them. Like, uh, you look I'm fire. like, just put them out. Like, it's fine. If Like, I just think he's such a brilliant photographer and I want him to like shoot an editorial for me one day. You should. Yeah, oh my God, he's wait. so great. Someone needs to do that. They I need know. to have like a paparazzi style, like Julia Fox I was thinking of making cover. my book cover uh, like a paparazzi style yes. shot or something. But apparently I need to look into the... Oh, you can't be like looking away. Yeah, no. For you need books, direct. apparently they've like studies have shown that the book does better if the person it's like is intense looking eye into contact. That. Yeah. Wow. I know. Weird. So you just kind of were like, okay, I know I'm going to get papped. This guy takes good photos of me and like I'm going to serve looks. Yeah. And it was really like, I just want to like change the vibe a little bit. Yeah. You know, and I also was coming off of, you know, being in that relationship mm-hmm. with the high profile person mm-hmm. who really showed me how to do it, you know, but, but the ideas are mine. They were yeah. mine, you know? So like, I don't, I didn't, don't really need him. And what am I going to do? Just stop now that we're not like together thing anymore. Like, what? no, Why I want to continue stop? because first of all, I'm having so much fun finding like cool, fun, y- pretty much student fashion designers. And that's my favorite part. Like I just love finding these hidden gems of people and like wearing the fucking clothes, you know? And then, and then they get like their first write up and then all, and then I feel really good about, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a, it's a really nice ecosystem. I don't get paid from it. I literally just do it Mm -hmm. like to just put out looks. Yeah. And I remember one time I said I was doing a service with my looks and like the media kind of dragged me, like people dragged me, like, what's the service No, she's I think doing? the streets loved it though. And I was like, um, have you not seen like the runways recently? Like yes. uh, there's a lot of Julia Fox inspired mm-hmm. looks and I'm not going to pretend like I don't see them. Right. I'm not going to call it out, but I, people see it. I get tagged in it. They send yeah. it to me. Like I know the influence, I know the impact and I know the vibes. And the girlies love the vibes. And that's just what it's about. 
I feel like we're talking a lot about transactions and like knowing how to like work the system and like be it being beneficial for other people and for yeah. you. Like I'm just so again, like that's what I respect about you so much and also am like inspired by because I relate to that and like being a hustler and whatever, but it kind of fucked me up. Like it traumatized me. And I feel like you don't have that as much like with your interactions with men in the past that you've like, you know, had, had transactional relationships with that you've come out on top. And like, obviously I can see that you have, um, like you hate men, which like retweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like you don't I feel like there's just like not that much vulnerability. Like you you feel like you really like come on t- out on top. And I like I don't know. I want to hear you talk about that. It uh, it's tough because, yeah, like I'm OK, mm-hmm. you know, but there's been a lot of damage yeah. done, you know, like I like I pretty much in my teens learned that I was a commodity and that. I can get money or re- resources from men. So w- then it just became this game of, okay, how do I become more desirable so I yeah. can get more money and I can be like that bitch and, and, and you know, be powerful. Yeah, yeah. And turning, but it's still powerful, like through them though, you know, like it's still them giving me the power. It's not my own yes. power, you know? So you it, it's, I mean, it's a humiliating kind of position yeah. to be be in or it humbling rather. Me, yeah. Sure. Like, especially when you're not in it anymore and you look back mm. and you're like, oh my God, you know, I can't well, believe. Well, you feel sick while it's happening, right? Mm. You're like, you feel you special. Dis- well, I disassociate. Yeah. I'm me too. really good at just, I'm out. Oh like, yeah, no. I didn't even realize I did that until I wrote the book and I was like, oh, holy shit. I've been disassociating like through my whole 20s, mm-hmm. literally not inside my body. I yeah. didn't even realize. I know. It's so fucking crazy. It's crazy, but it's a survival mechanism, you yeah. know, like we do it to to live, mm-hmm. which is insane. But I feel like now you're single, you're a mom, you're in your 30s. I feel like you've entered this new phase. Like I saw that TikTok where you're like, I don't fucking need to be like a hot yeah. bitch anymore. My vagina is shut down. Yeah. It's closed. Yeah. I love it. What has inspired this new era? I mean, I I think having a kid was a big part of it because I realized that prior to having Valentino, whenever I would like meet a guy or date a guy, I would always think like, Oh, like, okay, I could have a baby with him. Like, right. that was always my thought, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. It was never, like, because I was in love or anything, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I get it. You were literally thinking about, like, how can I build a family and a life? Yeah, like, I was, like, You were, like, nesting. oh, my God, I'm so, like, <laughs> Yeah, like, that was kind you. of always my end goal. Yeah. So I think when I had Valentino, it was, like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I don't need to put up with the, you know, the bullshit that comes with being around you guys anyway, mm-hmm. you know? But... But do you want more kids? The only time I think about having more kids is just if I'm like, oh, I don't want him to be lonely. I want him to have like a buddy in life, you yeah. know, to go through life with. But it's That's, so much work. Yeah, but it's so much work. And and I'm like really doing the work. I'm yeah. not, you know, so it's like, it, I don't, I wouldn't be able to do it right now. That's for sure. Yeah. But I'd also, I don't know. I kind of love our little like bond we have, just me and him. Yeah. They've also done studies and um, only children have higher IQs. I'm an only child. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, no, but I did really want a sibling. Yeah. Yeah. But also I I always like for ever, I would say like I wouldn't even I at one point was like I wouldn't even have a child if I knew they were going to be an only child because I just was like, I feel like it's so important to have siblings. Right. And I'm like, well, that's out the fucking window. Yeah. And also like. <laughs> Honestly, fine. Like, totally fine. It's, and I didn't know how much work it was. Mm-hmm. So the idea of having two now, I'm like, oh, so, like, even more? I mean, I'm sure that you can kind of, like, group things in and, like, I don't know. But just a newborn baby coming into my life right now scares the shit out of me. Like, never. Nightmare. Never. And it's it's crazy how much they don't tell you. Like, I feel like I was just like learning as I was going and, Mm -hmm. and like, like, I didn't know that your vagina could tear to your asshole. (sighs) You know, I didn't know that like, he might not latch, he might not want, or that I might not produce enough milk for him. Like, 
That was the hardest shit for me. It was blowing. after. Yeah. Like there was just so many things that I was like, damn, you know, I wish that we were a little more transparent yes. about what this is actually like, because I think that we have such a like romanticized, like vision of maternity yeah, and motherhood. Like a, a light is shining behind us and, and we're just, it's really not that at no, all. No. It's brutal the way I, you smell after birth. I don't yeah. know if that happened to you, but like two weeks after, like my hormones like shifted and I would wake up from sleeping and be like in a cold sweat and just smell insane. Oh my god! It's scary. It was so scary. My girlfriend had a baby like a month actually around the time Valentino was born and she was like I just want you to know like you're gonna smell really bad at one point Gosh. and then it happened to me I guess it didn't happen to you but I even my remember, dog though. my dog was like bitch but, get away oh my god yeah it was a lot no I didn't have that but I did so my tear and mm, my vagina yeah. they said like don't touch it it'll just heal on its own mm. but I was like wait that's gross like I'm gonna put hydrogen peroxide on it every day okay and because I did that, the wound wasn't healing and then got infected. No. Yeah. So then they put me on these antibiotics that I had a weird like immune situation no. reaction. And I got like arthritis for like two weeks. Like how old all, was Valentino? He was like maybe a month and a half. So you're a month and a half and postpartum. And I could not do no. this. I couldn't stand up. Like, and then once I figured out it was because at first I was like, oh my God, I have arthritis. Right. Like forever. That's just what I thought. Oh my and God. I got it from birth and I was Googling, right. can it happen? And it can happen. And of I was course, like, oh my everything God, it's happening to birth. me. Yeah, exactly. Like you, it's crazy. You could get diabetes. You could like so many, so many things can happen yeah. during birth. It's wild. And yeah, so whatever, I cut out the antibiotics and then I healed, but that was really fucking traumatizing. That's so scary. And then I also developed like sleep paralysis. I started um, every single night. I would have the feeling where you like wake up, but you're frozen. And then you're like, just wake up, wake like up. Like paralyzed. Wake up. You yeah, where move. you're like paralyzed, but you can't move. That started happening like every time I went to sleep because of just not getting a full night and waking Exhaustion. up like every hour because yeah. he was colicky and was having, you know, indigestion or whatever. So, I mean, it was just hell. So I always, tell, I always tell my friends that are like, that they want to have kids. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bitch, you are not ready. That's you are I not ready. Like, I'm telling are, you, nothing. somebody's like, oh my God, spending time around him makes me want a baby so bad. I'm like, no. It's like, you want to no. keep him for 24 hours and then come back. Yeah. And, and know. like, I get it. He's fucking cute. And there's yeah. so many beautiful things about it. But like, take your fucking time. You take your time. Mm -hmm. It is so much work. But anyway, back to what I was saying before about like the, um, the like who I would have a baby with. Yeah. I was thinking about it. And I, I just think that like this mother, father, children structure, I feel like people are really starting to not like it. I agree. I, I feel like a lot of things are kind of shifting mm -hmm. and I would not be surprised if maybe a trend started occurring where, you know, girls just have a baby with like their gay bestie or just a guy that yeah. is a friend who also just wants kids. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of just raise him more like in as a group setting type of situation, like kind of how we did back in caveman times. I mean, I know some adult people who were like basically from that situation, like their dad was gay and their their mom was like turning 40 and was like, I want to have a kid. And they're amazing. Yeah. And they have like a really balanced like outlook on life. And yeah. I mean, my best friend is living with me right now. So we fully co-parent mm. like Sly and I, I like wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. I love it so much. I mean, that's the dream. Spending time with like yeah. another woman uh -huh. and just like how much I don't have to like ever tell her. Like we, our instincts are so aligned. Like mm -hmm. when you are living with a man and you're taking care of a child, oh you my God, have they to do tell everything. Them. Yeah, they they never get it right. It's so yeah. exhausting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I definitely could see that. And um, so that's what I would do. I yeah. would I would just have a baby with a friend. I love you know? that. Yeah. yeah. The main thing I want or would want from a relationship is emotional support. And men are having such a hard time giving that to women. Yeah. I can't really imagine like wanting that with someone else and having this traditional family structure where like yeah. what I want is like an emotional partner who yeah. like can help me like feel good about myself day to day. Yeah. And, and I take just, on the emotional labor that comes with parenting, you yes. know, or just with life, with life. Yeah. yeah. Period. And with the relationship. And I just, I don't know, I'm obviously in a particular place in my life, but I can't imagine a man doing that. 
So I'm like, why, why would I ever yeah. have a relationship again? But we were talking about this when we had wine. Um, yeah. And I was saying like, the only problem for me is sex. I like sex. Yeah. yeah. You see, I don't. Like I, I can go without. I'm like so good. I And we were talking about that. It really made me think about actually like Marilyn Monroe um, because she did not like sex either. Yeah. And I think when you're sexualized so young, yeah. people think you're really sexual. Absolutely. And you were saying that happened. That's always been a thing. Yeah. And you were a dominatrix and everything, but that doesn't necessarily. I'm really desensitized to sex too. Yeah. Like it just, it's not like thrilling for me. You know, yeah, it doesn't excite you. No, like I want to like take ayahuasca and like see God. You know, like that <laughs> like, to that's me is thrilling. Thrill. Yeah, like yeah. to me that's cool. Yeah, like like just having it just seems so like trivial to me. Like I I probably won't even come because they yeah. it doesn't they don't know how they don't know how and it's it's ugh, like gross. what are you getting from it? Yeah, dirty. I know. I feel like you're Man. dirty. Ooh. <laughs> dirty man like don't touch my body yeah yeah um oh. no it's so true like I feel like you're very smart at being like okay what is this situation like where is the exchange happening yeah and with sex you're like why would exactly. I get something like what up? am I getting out of this what you know because sex for me has always been one-sided but I think mm. that's all women can yeah. you know say that so it's like yeah if I don't really need Definitely anything from you, I my don't 20, see the point. <laughs> yeah. No, and I like, I what was, there was a quote you gave for um, which magazine, for Perfect, that I was obsessed with, where you were like, um, about oh, being ugly. Yeah, and how that, like choosing to be this ugly. This is what you said. Fuck it. I want to be ugly at this point. Would that be the ultimate rebellion for a woman not to be pleasant on the eye? Because in the end, it's our bodies, but it doesn't really feel like our bodies. Yeah. Did they don't belong to us? Yeah. I fucking love that. That's it's so. True. So are you just like, I'm never going to be. I just think it's all about like, like clean girl aesthetic is out. Mm -hmm. It's about like dirty girl, mm -hmm. you know, like it's just about. Yeah, not. Cause not you know, jumping to conform to yeah. like what to be like for me now getting red. Like if I were to get dressed now and have the thought, like, I hope guys like are into this. Oh, like I can't even picture that. Like yes. I really do not get dressed with men in mind yes. at all, like at all, at all. Like I really couldn't care less. Like it, it, but you know, there was a time in my life where I, maybe I didn't have that thought per se, but I definitely like subconsciously yes. was catering yes. to the male gaze, mm -hmm. you know, but I was also in like survival mode and like, you know, you knew what you were doing. Exactly. You're like, this I is how to. I'm going to survive is by to. like appealing to them. Yeah. But now you can fucking bleach your brows. I love that so yeah. much for you. Yeah. So you're just doing shit for yourself mm -hmm. and for the girls. Yeah. And for my son, really, mm -hmm. like, I just want to make sure he's okay. And, and I'm just really... You know, it's hard, I think, as a single mom, like raising a son, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, because it's like, you just don't want to make, th like, have them end up like every single guy you've ever met, you know? know? And it's like, how do I stop this conditioning from occurring? It's so crazy. Sly, like, loves trucks. And oh my God, Valentino loves trucks. Ooh, okay. Well, they he need another reason for that. He freaks out for freaks trucks. Out. He stops everything he's doing. He's like, Whoa! So whoa! Yeah, <laughs> Sly literally is like, oh, oh, oh! Gets like so excited, loves to play with things with the wheels, and yeah. I'm like, I, I'm not kidding. This morning, I ordered him a baby doll and a tea set because oh I'm God. like, we gotta yeah, like balance this out. out. Yeah. But also, like, is this just what he likes? Well, naturally? Valentino loves pushing around a, a little stroller with a doll in it. Okay, yeah, we love that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he, we're and, and and I bought him a pink truck. Oh, Sly yeah. has a pink um, yeah. convertible thing. Okay, yeah. So, Oh, that's yeah, cute. I'm. I you know, it's. I don't know. I'm like, are those the little ways that you can start to help with the condi like making sure that the conditioning doesn't happen? I think happen? so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And spending a lot of time around women. Yeah, around women, and you know, as many different people as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. just really. Yeah, it I just don't know. it makes me so sad thinking about like somebody trying to toughen them up. You know? know, yeah, I know, and that's what where the patriarchy hurts men, you know, because I feel like men are just these like really re like repressed individuals that really have never 
Like even think about like women's fashion and then men's fashion, you know, like there is great men's fashion, obviously, but, but it's not like, you know, the way that women play around yes. and can express themselves. Mm. Cause you know, the, the, the way you dress is your like first mode of expressing expression. yourself yeah. to the world. And I feel like men just kind of fall in line, you know, they yeah, kind of just so do what limiting. the other ones are doing, you know, where women are kind of like more free to whatever. No, masculinity is so limiting. I and know. it does make me sad. There's actually um, this Bell Hooks book that I will get you a copy of. I'll order it, send it and make yeah. it to Valentino. But it's um, called The Will to Change Mascul Men, Masculinity and Something. And um, it's so good because her whole argument, which like pissed a lot of feminists off, was like sexism is bad for everyone. Like patriarchy is bad for everyone. Mm -hmm. And like men not being able to express themselves. And like men are in their flop era. I'm actually doing a show yeah. episode about it. It's crazy. Like they're not, they're living with their parents way longer. They don't have close relationships. The suicide rate are, uh, is up. Like they're not making as much money. They're not graduating like school. They're failing even like programs that are meant to incentivize young kids. Like girls do really well in those programs and little boys don't, which is so, I mean, obviously as a mom to a son, it makes me really sad and scared. And I'm like, yeah, obviously fucking sexism is terrible for women. Like you and I know that personally, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen it, but also it's really bad for guys. Yeah. And like some part of me, of course, feels empathetic. Like I'm pissed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how can you not, you yeah. know, because at the end of the day, like we're all just people and mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I say I hate men, but that's mm -hmm. not true. You know, I don't actually hate men. I hate the patriarchy and yeah. I hate what it's done to men. Yes. Um, but you know, obviously there are really amazing, wonderful men out there. Mm -hmm. I've just yet to meet one. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's how no, I feel I'm too. Kidding. I know some good guys. I know some good I guys. I know, but I think what you're saying is like, it's the system. It's almost like good cops and bad cops. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I'm sure there's some nice, there's some nice people who work in the police force, but one bad apple spoils the bunch. And and also, yeah, it's like if you're one of the good ones, but you're not speaking up for, you know, what, mm -hmm. what the bad one's doing, that makes you one of the bad ones. You know, silence is complicit. I've you know noticed what I mean? that like, a lot of like good guys are very quick to just be like, wait, what? Like, yeah, turn the other cheek, yeah. just not get involved. They're like, like yeah, that's not Well, great. at least that's not me, you know, but it's, they don't realize the damage that it's doing. And they almost like like to define themselves ad, as good guys and mm -hmm. like as woke, but yeah. then they're almost worse because yeah. they, they like pat themselves on the back. Well, because they're able to mask, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they've studied women, they know what the women want to hear. So they just kind of put on the mask, but then, you know, obviously the, the mask comes off. Like, I feel like you played the system, you fucking were dominatrix, you had boyfriends who served like a purpose for you in your life. You're in a place now where you're like, I don't fucking need men. Mm -hmm. What's next? I just want to dive into like my creative mm -hmm. projects, like, like nothing. I, I love creating art more than anything in the world, mm -hmm. you know, aside from my son, like that is my passion. Yeah. Um, and that comes in all form. That's why I was thinking about doing music because I was like, oh, that's really actually when I was little, I remember I wanted to my, my I wanted to take guitar lessons. And I was, you know, I told my mom, I want to be a rock star when I grow up. I can see it. And she was like, Julia, like, be realistic. That's no, like you need to choose a real career, you know, like and and immediately like. I just kind of lost interest right. in a weird, like, I don't know why. Well, but she I, deterred you. Yeah, yeah. She, she did. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that is an unrealistic. Like, what am I thinking about? But, you know, I loved music when I was little growing up. I remember when I moved to America, my dad had like a record player with all these old records, like Diana Ross mm -hmm. and um, uh, Barry White, Sick. like just, just so many different uh, the Beatles, like all, all these like old records mm -hmm. and all my, all my peers at school were listening to like Britney Spears and NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys. But I was listening to like the Cardigans and oh like, my God, that's like, and how just I was. like, yeah. And, and, and I, I love like rock, alternative mm. rock music. Like I literally grew up listening to Howard Stern on K-Rock every oh single God. morning for at least a decade of my wow. very formative years. You need years. to go on Stern. I know, I know. I need to have him on my podcast. Yes, that's too. right. I love him. He's so iconic. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. I kind of 
like always loved music and and yeah, we're definitely going to write a song together. <laughs> Yo, I'm ready to drop a track. I know. I'm ready to drop I know. a track. I, and I feel like I, I know some cool people, like my friend Jack Donahue, like mm-hmm. he was in Salem. I feel like he Sick. could definitely come up with like a cool, I don't know, I, I'm going to bother him some more I can also just imagine you performing, like performance art being oh, your thing. It would be all about the performance. When you said rock star, I was like, yeah, obviously I can picture you writing songs, but I can yeah. picture you on stage, like performing music yeah. more than anything I i'll be in the back with the like yeah. tambourine, <laughs> tambourine. <laughs> i'm like i'm here i see a tambourine for you i'm down that. i'm down for the tambourine and yeah. then like sly and valentino can be like somehow yeah coordinated doing something dance yeah wait i love this okay yeah. so basically any i mean i guess yeah I'm i just love all art and i love yeah. all expression and like that's really like what i want to do with my life mm-hmm. like i don't um, like relationships aren't as important to me yeah. right now. Yeah, you know, well, yeah, with men, with it seems men, like you yeah, have, with your family. Yeah, like I have Those my sister, so my friend. Yeah. yeah, and but yeah, no, definitely no. Um, but are you somebody who I like? I'm not this way, but I respect people who are, and I feel I, there's no way to do it. But people have like five year, ten year plan, and I do feel like you manifest, and I do feel like you are intentional. Yeah. But do you have like a five year, ten year plan, or are you just manifesting? Honestly, right now, like no. Okay. Because um, I'm just going. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just whatever. You're like following. I following. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of just. I have this like blind faith and trust in in like the universe. Me too. Um, that like, like I don't like, because even when I do plan, it never really comes exact like whatever. Yeah. But I always do end up getting whatever it is that I really wanted. Yeah. You know, but it sometimes doesn't come in the form or at the same or at the time that I wanted it, or then it comes and it actually brings something bad, and I'm like, oh, I didn't want yes. you know, that. Like, so always be careful what you wish for. It's such a cliche, but it's so true. So I don't really sit there and do the whole like whatever. I just take action. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. I just do. What don't, you don't mean think you don't just do, do the like manifestation thing you. If I manifest, mm-hmm. I really just manifest like um, like positivity. Yeah. You know, like I really. Like happiness. Elevation. Yeah. yeah. Like more like like inviting those types of energies into my life. Like I don't sit there like I want to make five million dollars mm-hmm. by this. like no right I'm like not, specifics no yeah, yeah, no yeah. I I did used to like do that more mm-hmm. and now I just it's more just like because it always comes with a price hap- when you do that exactly I think it does yeah. it does it's like you here's are your five of, million dollars but yeah mm-hmm. but your soul <laughs> your actual fucking soul. exactly exactly so I think it's just really about like taking the next good action. Mm-hmm. What what is the action you can do today yeah. that is good that will lead to what you want? Like you know? tiny baby steps. Yeah, because you then... can't just like pay for five million dollars and then you don't get out of bed for a year yeah. and like nothing happens. You know what I'm no, saying? You like, have to work. You kind of have to meet it halfway, mm-hmm. but it's there for you. You yeah. just have to go get it. But it's not going to be handed to you. I mean, you're very multifaceted. Like I'm thinking about all the things that you have like invested. Like you have your podcast. You have TikTok. Honestly, like I think social media is like that's a career yeah. like in itself then acting you have a movie coming out right yeah yeah with Vito yeah, yeah. with Vito Schnabel that's and Tony that K Tony, yeah Tony K directed it it's called The Trainer cool I think it's gonna be insane like definitely art with acting it's I don't know I also kind of feel like after this whole like the big relationship and all mm-hmm. the like things that followed. Yeah. I definitely felt like, oh, I feel a shift in like the acting way, like not in a good way mm. where it was like, I'm not getting as many like offers as I was right. before, weirdly. Because they're judging you basically. Maybe they're like, she's the not an actor. Liability, Ugh. just tabloid type of yeah. person. Like, I don't know what it is, but that was something that I noticed. And I was like, okay, this is weird. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of weird drawbacks like here and there with like reaching that level of like notoriety. Well, do you feel like people try to typecast you more now kind of, or like not as an actress, but as a person? Before I was really typecasted as like curvy Italian girl. And now I'm just like skinny and look sickly. And it's (laughs) like, I don't know, like We'll have to see. Right. But, but it's fine. It's, it's fine. Yeah, I'm so busy. One door I, closes another. Right, and, yeah, yeah. And like, I think things come at you, like things come to you at the right time. Like, so that's why I'm also really not stressing and I don't, yeah. I really don't care. But because I, I know that like, I just have to trust 
the process, you totally. know? And also, I liked how you skipped Fashion Week this. Well, I texted you and I was like, oh, I'm so yeah. excited you're in Milan. I thought you maybe were there with Valentina and Sly. And you were like, I'm fucking over fashion. Yeah. What are you feeling about fashion? Well, it was like, it was just fashion. You know, New York really took it out of mm-hmm. me because I'm doing the shows, but I also have Valentino and I'm yeah. like juggling all the things. But he came to the shows, which I love. Yeah, he, I did take yeah. him. And, but that's also a lot of work, to, I know. you know. I saw he had like headphones. I was like, because yeah. I was obviously like, oh, that's sick. Like, I want to do that with Sly. And then I saw like, it's a lot of work. He was, he started squirming and screaming. Mm. Um, but it, it was cute. Whatever. We got good So you picks. were just over it because New York had yeah, taken it out of you. Yeah, really took it out of me. And then I went to Milan for like literally a day mm-hmm. just for the Diesel show. And then I just took off the rest of October to write, to work on the book. Mm -hmm. And I, it, you know, and I had to turn down a lot of things Mm -hmm. and really like put boundaries in place. And obviously, you know, it, it, like when you put boundaries and you're like, no, like you feel people being like, what do you mean? No, like, you know, so I really had to be like, I'm not working this month on anything. I need to work on my book. I'm on a yeah. deadline. I'm already behind. Like I have such bad anxiety. Like you're not making it better, you know? Yeah. So, and I'm sure it's hard to say no to things when you work so hard to like get to a place where I people know. are offering you inviting shit. you and wanting to pay and they walk, walk in this show and that show. Like I got asked to walk in so many shows, but I just, I really had to work on the fucking yeah. book. I was so behind. Like, I, I, I was like, I cannot dodge one more email from my agent. Like, I cannot <laughs> one more. Like, it, I need to do this. So I can't wait to read it. Thank you. Uh, it's going to probably be my favorite book. Thank you. Do you, know, do you have I a mean, title? I, I think I'm just going to call it a masterpiece. I mean, that's fucking yeah, good. Yeah, because I feel like I said it already. And then, like, in the Uber commercial, the book they had me holding said masterpiece on it. And I was looking at it and I was like, yep. This You're is like, the that's title the of title. the book. Thanks, Uber. Thanks, wow, God. I'm picturing the cover of you, like a paparazzi shop where, where you're like looking intently into the camera and then it says masterpiece and yeah. talk about fucking manifestation. Uh, bestseller. Bestseller. Uh, I hope so. Yes, for sure. That'd be really cool because it really has always been a childhood dream. Like I actually used to sit and pray. I'm a big prayer. Mm. I will say that. Okay, that's manifesting. Yeah, yeah. I used to pray too as a little kid. Yeah, I would yeah. pray a lot and I would always pray like, I hope I can write a book one day. Yeah, you will. there's no mm-hmm. doubt. You'll probably write many. I think so. I, I would really yeah. like to go into like the like more fictional zone. Mm-hmm. And, and just I want that too. Let my imagination run. Well, then free. it's less pressure. Mm-hmm. What about writing scripts? Would you write scripts? I've written so many scripts. Okay, yeah, sick. I actually have one right now that a production company's ready with money to fund it but we need to find a director. Okay. And, you know, obviously I would love to have a woman. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, but it's tough. It's work. Yeah, and it's, it's hard. Tough. Like, so bringing whoever's all watching this, let's send me your reel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Find a director for yeah, Julie's movie. A, it's What's really it good. It's called Lipstick Palm. Okay. And I wrote it with my friend Sarah. And it's just, it, it's the story of these two girls. Like they're fucking cracked out like in and out of AA like having sugar daddies and then it turns into pr- pretty much it turns into like a murder situation Sick. I don't want to give it away but it's yeah it's really cool like it's just a roller coaster amazing like, but it's is funny. it based on no I mean, no, okay. no no it's actually all like made up okay yeah like I, we completely made it up I feel like that'll yeah. be a hit because it's a murder murder yeah, yeah. I did want to talk to you about standing up for Amber Heard because I just thought that was really incredible. Thank you. That was crazy. Yeah. (laughs) What I mean, I made like one tiny little comment, and it was like I remember. Yeah. Weeks. I I still get people. I know. So angry. They're so angry. Well, I feel like there is like a little movement on TikTok Mm -hmm. where after all the documents were released and people really read everything and and read his assistant or his manager's uh, testimony and whatever, I feel like there was kind of like a backtrack. Yes. But like a response, like pro-amber. Yeah, but still the damage is Mm -hmm. done. And 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 yeah, I did have to say something um, because if it could happen to Amber Heard, who is a white, blonde, beautiful, um, successful actress, because people say that she had no career before, but she did. Mm-hmm. She had oh, she did. Over, like over 10 movies, I mm-hmm. think. So um, um, it can really happen to you. We, none of us are safe. Yeah. 
And like for me, I always just see things like bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Like I never really harp on the small details. I look at like, what does this mean for the collective? Yeah. And with that and then with the Roe v. Wade being overturned and, and then what was happening over in Afghanistan, I just felt like compelled to say something. Yeah. Because I was like, guys, like, yeah, you guys are making comments, but you don't realize that this is going to damage women. All of humanity, of all the women in the world are going to suffer from this. I mean, it's already so scary to come yeah. out and talk about the experiences we have as women. I and know. then, and it's hard to prove them because it's like, you know, abuse is so insidious and, and you don't, sometimes you don't even know you're being abused, mm-hmm. you know, and no. sometimes you're being abused, but you don't want to see yourself as a victim. Yes. So you try to be tough and fight back. So then it can be like, oh, but no, we fight each other. Ugh, Bitch, I know. you know he whoops your fucking ass. Like, stop. You know what I mean? And I only know because I've been there. I was going to say, so, you've spoken out about your own experiences yeah. and had people like not believe you, right? Yeah. And it happened to me too. So obviously I always stand up for, for the women in a situation just because I've been there yeah. and I know how lonely it is and how scary it is when like people that you've known even your whole life are kind of like looking at you funny, like- you know, and it's like, I'm not a liar. Like, call me any name in the book, but a liar, that is not me. Like, no, and the way that people turned her into this, like, hysterical character. It's fucked up. Well, I'm so grateful you came on and did this. I can't wait for the book to drop, the album to drop, the next TikTok <laughs> to drop, the fashion line to drop, the movies. Thank like, you. Like, yes, bitch, you're doing Thank it all. You. It's really Thank amazing. You and you did it yourself. Yeah. I did it myself, bitch.